Dann mach doch deinen Scheiß! Imagine you can only choose one lens for the rest of your life. Maybe is it a 35, is it a 50? For me, would it probably this 50 millimeter lens. As some other cool facts about this lens, it has amazing micro contrast. Like I said, micro contrast is very, very important when you want to have a very exceptional good lens you want micro contrast. I don't know what they do in this lens, how they build it or whatever. I think it has something to do with how thin the lenses are inside of the lens and the coding and everything, but it gives an image this certain 3D pop. And I wanted to have this lens for a long time. That's like my the last thing. I have now all the infinity stones in my gauntlet and I have every lens that's basically like the soul stone for me or whatever. I don't know. That's an that's a very hefty lens. I was actually a bit proud when I purchased the lens. I was never the guy that worked so much with prime lenses with fixed focal ranges, but I think that changes now with this lens. I got this lens a week ago in the mail and I tested it. I made even some chromatic aberrations tests. Um, I made some focus breathing tests, fo focus tests, all kinds of sharpness tests. That's an amazing sharp lens. I, I, I paid 1475 euro for it. It's new around 2000 euro for a prime lens. Is this a lot of money, but I can tell you this lens is worth a lot of money. Filming me currently is also the 24 to 70 mm S Pro lens on the Lumix S1H. I had the first experience with this kind of micro contrast when I got the 24 to 70 mm S Pro lens. Micro contrast is a thing. Micro contrast, you see it when you see it. It's hard to describe. It's like the colors have more 3D pop to it. The whole image looks like more organic. It has a certain quality to it that you see in the lens. It has also an aperture ring on it. An aperture ring that's really handy. It has automatic aperture and then from 1.4 to f16 and it's sharp all over the whole range. I don't like to praise then all the gear to only get then a Lumix partner or whatever. I am honest in my critique it's critique on a very very high level. I mainly do video. I'm a full-time freelancer. I do this 100% free, uh, freelancer. I don't have a job. I work from this stuff, you know. And never, 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 never ever had I a situation where I had a client tell, said to me, well, that's a little bit focus breathing in this shot. Even I don't see focus breathing. Occasionally I do a fixed shot where then I rack focus a bit back and forth, but usually these scenes are so short and this lens has a little bit focus breathing in it that's why I think cinema lenses add then a zero more to the price to get rid of this focus breathing even but it's very very minimal the image quality is very good in this lens it's an amazing image quality I like this image quality so much it is sharp it is very sharp it's I think the sharpest lens I own so far because the, the image just looks amazing. I can use all the 24 megapixel in my camera, zoom in and see every hair in on my eyelids and everything. Um, and a cool thing about this lens is the lens hood, you can easily screw on a filter here. I don't have a 77 millimeter filter. I, I have a 77 millimeter filter, but I want to use all the same filters, the 82 millimeters, and I got a Lumos step up ring. It's from 77 to 82 millimeters. And the cool thing about this lens is you have here some millimeters space. When you then screw on, I show it you here, this filter ring, the step up ring, you can easily use your lens hood. 
with the 82 millimeter filter adapter that's very nice i can use now my good gobe 82 millimeter filter rings here i use this on all my lenses because the 24 to 70 millimeter has 82 millimeter lens diameter the 70 to 200 as well and i can use this with this lens as well i dust this also with the 60 to 35 millimeter because it's also only 77 millimeter i wanted to have this lens for a long time three years ago this was a lot of money for me and a week ago when i purchased this lens for 1475 euros that bothered that didn't bother me so much that was okay i have 1475 euro more or less on my bank account that i i don't feel this so much that that's not the thing that i'm a rich man now or whatever but if you work with money if you charge your clients three to five to ten thousand euro per per video project these numbers become a little bit smaller that's a that's a little tip in life things become things become more affordable if you have more money <laughs> but the satisfaction was not so ultra heavy when i clicked on purchasing this lens the satisfaction when i purchased the lumix s5 with the sigma 24 to 70 or the, even the gh5 was crazy for me or when i got my second lens that was exciting that was that was ultra amazing and i'm still thankful for all the equipment and all the gear i can acquire but um, it became a little bit more of the business thing. I guess when you do this as a hobby and you love your hobby as much as I do, but you have maybe more time for your hobby. I don't have so much time for hobby. I work with this stuff. Then it becomes more like a tool. This is a tool for me. I will use it as a tool. I will use it in rain, snow, hail, storm, or when, I don't know, it raining meteors or stuff. And um, it's for me a tool, but as I then opened the package that was still very very cool for me to have then this lens because I wanted this lens for a long time and now I have this lens. And I am convinced that the quality of a lens doesn't come only from the wide open aperture, the f1 point something and the, the focal range. Even when a lens says it has like 24 to 200 millimeter f2.8 all the way or something, I see a good lens in image quality. What is image quality in a lens? Is how the colors are rendered, how the sharpness is. Even when you zoom in to the last, last little detail in your image, when you can see every corner sharp and the, even the last piece of hair on your eye is sharp, um, that's make, that makes a great lens. And the image has then like a certain feeling to it that not every lens can deliver, it, you know? And I think the Leica certification in the Lumix lenses, it actually means something. There's a reason that lens is expensive. Well, if, if every lens would be like this, then uh, you can buy any lens, but you can only get, I think, this, this look and this feeling with certain lenses. I'm convinced that is a thing. And I'm not usually this guy that makes an ordinary lens test with like, I have a, like, I print a test chart and I test the sharpness. But I did it anyway with a little wall uh, next to my house and I tested the sharpness in the corners and everything. I compared it to the 35mm S lenses uh, because Lumix has also a very nice lineup of S lenses, not the S Pro lenses, the S lenses. There's, there's a 50mm f1.8 lens. I don't have this, but I have the 35mm f1.8. It's also a very good lens, it's sharp, it's a prime lens. But when you compare it then to this lens, then you see the difference. Otherwise, you don't see the difference. Only when you have the pictures next to each other, the Lumix lens is like so sharp that when you look at the image of the S lens, the 35 millimeter in my case, it doesn't look so sharp anymore. You think then, is my lens broken? No, it's not. You have just purchased a very, very sharp 50 millimeter lens. Also the corner sharpness and chromatic aberration is a thing in the S lenses. On some day-to-day -day situation you don't even recognize um, chromatic aberration or anything but I experienced it once on some professional shoots when you have a lot of light, a lot of contrasty scenes, then you see chromatic aberrations. Especially if you have the real world situation where you want to film a nice motorcycle or a car with a lot of chrome on it, like an old vintage car, and when you film this, an f1.8 on a S lens, you will see chromatic aberration, especially in a cropped APS-C version, when you then want to make the 35mm to 50mm or something, um, then you see chromatic aberration. 
One downside the 50 mm has, it has a little bit focus breathing. I think that's quite normal to have a little bit focus breathing in a fixed prime lens when you move the elements of the lens. That's okay focus breathing. Um, I guess when you want to have a lens without any focus breathing, then you have to purchase a very, very expensive cinema lens from like uh, Zeiss or something. But then you can add at least one zero and double the price of this lens, then you pay a lot of money for a lens. And I think this lens is amazing. Man, the autofocus with this lens, with the Lumix S5 obviously here, is unusable. That's the, that's the moment I wish I have the Lumix S5 Mark II or S5 Mark II X or something, but I'm not yet sponsored by Lumix, I don't know. But that's the, I hold this lens now on, my arm is completely straight and that becomes really, really heavy, but that's how far you have to be when you want to see at least something in the lens. Um, you cannot vlog with the 50 millimeter, but this is in every 50 millimeter the case, but that's, that's very heavy because Lumix S5 plus almost one kilo. That's a good workout for shoulders, by the way. I now go to uh, Kaufland, a little bit late night shopping, and then we see us right back here in the cinema. Why and when do you need such an expensive lens? I mean, that's an, that's an hefty price. I purchased it used. It was from a retailer. I have warranty on it and everything. It was basically sitting in a shelf for like 1,500 euro and I purchased it used. That's a very good deal in my opinion. I never found a better deal and um, it's like brand new. And why do you need and when do you need 0.4 stops more of aperture and uh, and like you pay like almost 2000 euro or 1000 something euro more instead of the 50 millimeter f1.8. It's because of the quality of the lens and it comes with the focus clutch, it comes even with an aperture ring and it's more weather sealed and everything is more nice. And I think it always like this that I marry the lens and I date the body. I will replace the S5 someday and I will replace my S1H, hopefully with the S1H Mark II someday. Greetings to Lumix here. And you want, more, you, you will keep the lens longer than the body, that's for sure. Oh, I see a nice motorcycle here and uh, I, I miss my motorcycle. I, I, I haven't even drove one kilometer with my bike this year um, because it sits in a garage. Last year I had a little accident on a race track and um, I want to uh, paint it new, let it paint new from an expert, but that's, uh, the money is not the issue, but to find an expert, that's basically the issue. But um, nevertheless, um, I keep the lenses basically longer than the body. The bodies will change over the years, but when you purchase a really, really good lens, you can keep this lens for several years, maybe 10 years, 15 years. Or if, you, if you're good, you can keep a lens 20 years and longer and it will keep its value because when you don't scratch it, when you don't let it hit the ground and anything, that will keep its value because it stays good, you know? That's, that's the thing, a lens is a lens. It doesn't deteriorate when you take a lot of pictures with it. So, little bouquet test here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's like the bouquet you get with 50mm f1.4 when you do like a portrait shot or something. I think the bouquet looks amazing in this lens. Um, of course, when I move closer, the bouquet becomes very, very more dominant and the background is basically melting away. I think the bouquet looks beautiful and uh, autofocus test with the Lumix S1H with, I don't know, some settings, I don't know, I don't use autofocus so much, but that's like how the bouquet looks with this lens. I think that looks completely cool. Uh, let's stop this down a little bit. That's the cool thing. I can just then move the aperture ring here and uh, I'll adjust the ND filter. And now we have even f3.5 and that still looks pretty cool. But you know what? You, I know you, you want the glorious f1.4 and now you have f1.4. I think that's a, an amazing looking lens. It's still very sharp. We're filming in 4K all intra. The Lumix S1H has not the ultra sharpest image because it has an OLPF filter that makes the skin a little bit softer, a little bit smoother, a little bit more cinema camera like. That's why I like this camera. Welcome to the last part of this video. I have this lens maybe now seven days and it's the, the glorious the seventh day um, of my journey with this lens and I can tell you that's an amazing lens. That's the best prime lens I ever had. That's the that's, that's amazing micro contrast, amazing sharpness, 
it is ultra nice. The autofocus even is okay, I think. It has two autofocus engines built in it. The image quality is exceptional good. Even wide open is it sharp till the corners, no chromatic aber aberration, no anything. A little tiny bit of focus breathing that you will not notice in a real world scenario. And I can tell you that's the best 50 millimeter you can get right now. I didn't compare to to the Sigma or other size lenses, but I will compare it in my next video to the 50mm S lens. Maybe you are completely okay with the 50mm S lens for like, you can get it used I think for like three to 400 euro and it's probably also a good lens, but we will compare these both lenses. Um, it took a while till I finished this video because I'm a full-time videographer, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, I actually work with my camera, with the Lumix S5, with the Lumix S1H and I make videos with these camera to provide a living um, for me and my family. And I prepare now a little bit food for my family, that's why I will go back now inside the kitchen and cook a nice meal. Um, if you have any questions about this lens, I will answer every comment on my little small YouTube channel. I appreciate every one of you. It's actually so cool that we reach 2800 subscribers. If I imagine when here are 2800 people, that would be ultra crazy for me. However, um, subscribe if you want to see this number grow and if you want to see me more, then we see us in the next video. My name is Paul. Bye. A lot of people claim that they are on YouTube ultra healthy and I always do the right thing and I am super super awesome and everything but the reality is people smoke, some people are unhealthy, some people have bad habits and I am none of these people that is ultra perfect. I smoke, sometimes I drink something and I don't care if YouTube flags this video then it's unhealthy whatever. Welcome to this little lens, 50mm as Pro Lens from Lumix.